warms the coggles of my heart to see you stopping in. I appreciate you sharing your time with me. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is another fresh week. It is Monday, January 23rd. Now, as we do in all these shows, we are going to be looking at hot OTC and penny stocks, but we're going to do it a little differently. We were literally looking at the hot and on top stocks before. You could go to your scans, put in a scan, and whatever stocks we were talking about were probably right up there at the very top. Well, <laughs> that's pretty easy for you to find. Not to mention that when they have those sort of runs, they normally don't go back there for a very long time. And that's what I noticed when I looked at a lot of stocks we had looked at over the last 10 months. Bunches of them had had great days, hit highs, and just fell, and have not been anywhere near those again. And that's it's good to learn why a stock is running, but it is still hindsight. That's not going to make us any money. So we're going to start looking at stocks that have warm charts that have news that could move it. That means a lot of stuff we're going to look at isn't going to have news out today, but they had news out recently that could cause this stock to move at any time. So between the charts heat and the news, we should find things that are going to put money in our pocket. Now, of course, we're still going to look at OTC stocks. Penny stocks are any stock under five bucks. There's lots of those on the OTC market, but there's also lots of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. And I'm not prejudiced. I will play them all if the setup is right. Now, when I do my research on OTC stocks specifically, this is my go-to site. But to be completely honest, it's always my go-to site. I start here with any stock I'm going to look at. And if I can't find what I'm looking for, I know the internet's there waiting for me. So I'm not worried about it. But when it comes to OTC stocks, this is your number one site, folks. There is not another site on the internet that updates every single OTC stock every single day. And who am I referring to updating it? FINRA and the SEC. These are the people with the information you're looking for. Share structure, financials, filings, news. It all comes here in real time. As soon as it's released, it's brought here. Why waste your time running around the internet searching, sorting through outdated information? Just come here. Save yourself the hassle. Save yourself the time. Time is the most valuable asset we got, is it not? All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Not impressive at first glance here. Let's hope for something on a refresh. We got a little bit. A little bit is better than nothing. Our dollar volume is getting closer to that 2 billion, 2.1 billion, which is where we were for the longest time, and now we haven't been for the longest time. So I would at least like to get back to there. Share volume, well, anything under 10 billion, you can just think of as first gear. We're still in first gear. Yeah, we're bumping up, but we haven't got out of that grinder. Once we hit 10 billion, you can see the momentum pick up on the market. So we got a ways to go there. And our trades, we have been stuck between 250,000 and 300,000 for longer than I remember. I just can't remember. We have broke out of it up and down, but we keep returning to it. Of course, we want that to go up as well. So there's no big change on the market, but there is a big change in stocks we're looking at. So not as many oohs and ahs, but hopefully more. Now these stocks we're gonna be taking a look at, I found all of them today by going to the charts first. Normally, I look at the news. I find news that looks to be hot, that could get the stock running. I do my scans. I find stocks that are up at the top, as I said. Well, those are all easy, but it's also, you know, aftermath, they've already run, or throwing the dice. Which one of these pieces of news is going to have it running? So I decided to look at the charts and see which one was warm. Put your hands on the pot. Ooh, that pot's already warming up. And I see the little bubbles at the bottom. So I find the chart, then I go find the news to support a movement in the future. And that's what we're looking at right now. So first one I found was ticker SVSN, Stereo Vision Entertainment. They had news on the 11th. It's been climbing since then. Then they had news come out today and it continued climbing and the chart still looks strong. So SVSN finished the day just under a penny and a half, 0 0.0135 at 12 and a half percent gains. She's on the pink tier, current, and has both those green ticks I am always dogging you about. The verified profile and the transfer agent verified. 
Folks, these are really important, especially if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold. There is a lot of important information represented by these two ticks that is validated behind the scenes by an unbiased third party. Actually, it's the otcmarkets.com website. They actually do this. And if you're in a pink, you want as much validated information as you can get. So this is real good to see. Now, if you're just gonna be in the stock for a short swing or a day trade, you really don't have to worry about this too much. So what does SVSN do? Well, they really don't explain it well down here. They say that they are a Nevada public company utilizing their award-winning team of industry professionals in the areas of climate change, mitigation, and multimedia. Now, from what I've been able to gather, and remember, I didn't do a deep dive, this company is involved with uh, carbon credits. What they're actually doing is planting trees. They're reforesting lots of different places in the world. Now, I don't know if they're just supplying the seeds, the saplings, if they're actually digging the holes and planting the trees. And you don't make a lot of money actually by planting the trees, but it's how much carbon they sequester, how much clean do they put off. And what they get are carbon credits that they can sell for big money, just for helping clean up the atmosphere. Well, where they get that money is from the big polluters. The people putting all that carbon in the air have to buy a certain number of carbon credits as their punishment for polluting the environment. So companies like this bring their carbon credits to the big polluters who pay them big bucks and that's how they make their money. That's how Tesla got ahead so fast. For every car that he sold or had ordered, he was getting carbon credits and he was being paid for them every year and he was making millions of dollars way before he was making anything and that's what catapulted his company so far so fast so what was the relative volume around svsn today two <laughs> Well, she's under the radar, still is. She is under 50,000 shares a day. Today, she only did 37,000 shares, but did get 12.5% gains. Share structure. All right, the lucky thing is, being a pink, they normally only have disclaimers. Disclaimers are just the numbers the financials passed off to us by the management, not no CPA. So you can normally find the float in those. And I did find the float. This one was... 45.8 million shares. They actually list that in there. Here they had listed 46. They're real close. This is the unrestricted shares. I normally go to unrestricted. I figure any share that's on the market is unrestricted. Well, any share on the market is the float. They're supposed to be one and the same, but I have not found that to be the case. Many times it's different. But even though they list the float here, you can see that's different and normally out of date. So I don't normally trust that one. So whenever I get a chance to just go into the disclosure, I do. Financials for this company, nothing to talk about here. They're making no money. They did make something a couple years ago. They made $3 million, don't know how they did it. Maybe they had one tax credit they cashed in, I don't know. Quarterly, they got nothing sitting on the table whatsoever. And then under their disclosures, the most recent disclosure here is super duper short to qualify. They were putting some shares on the market, I believe it was. This activated it, and I think this is like a stamp, boop, boop, saying, okay, it's ready to go. That's it. That's the whole form right there. So let's go take a look at the news. The news is why she's running, and the news is why I think she's going to run. Obviously, it isn't the finances. They're not making any money. So they got lots of news here talking about a different company they've gotten with, Climate Cure Capital and Vision 2050 Forestry. That is a huge name, but it's one of their divisions that help plant trees. Well, they had two pieces of news come out. One was at the 11th, as I said, and one was today. Let's take a look at both of those. First one. This came out on the 11th. Eco Ally signs JV, a joint venture, with Seed, S A S, and Cyrus Investments, S A S, to reforest and establish super green plantations on up to 1 million hectares. Whoa, that's a lot, folks, of government and private land in Colombia. The company has signed a 40 year 50 50 joint venture with Seeds SAS and Cyrus Investments and Accessos Holographic to reforest and establish super green tree plantations on up to 1 million acres, hectares, of government and privately owned land in Colombia. 
Now the Colombia president, Gustavo Petro, he's leading the charge on the battle of climate change there. And President Biden is committed to billions of dollars to purchase carbon credits in countries joining the renewable and sustainable economy. So they have found themselves an indoor to getting some of the money that Biden wants to put out there for helping clean the air. EA, that is this company, Eco Ally, EA is receiving 50% of the net and being paid $600,000 upon the first delivery of 6 million SGT seeds to Seed SAS in Colombia, with EA's sister company, Climate Cures Capital 5050 Project, underway in Ghana. They also have another one going on in Florida, Haiti, and Croatia. So they're planting trees in a lot of different areas. Then they had a piece of news come out today, which I didn't think was a big piece of news until I looked into it, and it's very influential. They tell us here that Eco Allies appoints David Waite to their board of directors with immediate effect. Eco Allies, a stereo vision subsidiary, announced today that David Waite has been appointed to their board as managing director and will report directly to SVSN CEO. So what, right? Well, David brought in the Ghana project. He brought in the Haitian project, the Colombian project, the Croatian project, and he's looking forward to working with Discovery TV. The man has influence. This is the company. Everything we were reading in the last bit of news sounds like he's responsible for. So now he's inside with us as a director, meaning everything he does, he has to do it for this company. He can't be doing it for other people in competition, right? So those are the two pieces of news we've got right now that have the stock moving. Let's go take a look at how she's moving on the charts. Now, if you're an avid watcher of my show, you know exactly where we're at. Think or Swim, my free trading platform. If you like this, you want to back up to your Weeble in case it goes, <laughs> just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, and they'll give this to you absolutely free. And to use it, all you got to do is keep your account open. That's it. You don't have to trade with them. You don't have to give them a deposit. Just keep your account open, and you can use this anytime you like for free. So we are looking at ticker SVSN, six month, four hour chart here. Back in July, we had a high of almost six cents, 5.89. And a month ago, we hit a low bubble of double zero seven. We had a nice run here. She started off at uh, just a little over a penny, went to just under six cents. You've got close to 300% gains right there. And where she started from is where she fell to. Boom, beginning, end. And she's been respecting that line all the way across here. Even now, she's just gotten on top of it. Now let's put another support here. I can see a strong one right about there. So that's up at two cents. And then of course, you're gonna take half of that. Half of anything is a perfect average. That's why you always hear me talking about the 50% mark on the Fibonacci. When you have a surge like this, going from top to bottom, Find the middle. Now you can use the Fibonacci or you can eyeball it. Close enough is good enough, believe it or not, folks. Right there is about 50%. Maybe a little high, maybe a little low, but somewhere in there. So we're up at uh, oh, 0 0.038, okay? So right now we are at 13. That would be about a 300% gain if she caught a run and only caught half of that. That is a strong resistance. This is where I would expect it. If it caught momentum to bang its head, first and then try to get back up on top. So that could be a nice run for us right there. Uh, our technicals, pretty decent. Our PPO, which is a lot like the MACD, you read them the same. She's got a crossover going right now. She is pointing up. MACD is just crossing the signal line. She's on the right side of her line. And our RSI has been climbing for days, getting stronger and stronger. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. So we had a low bubble back here of 007. That was the third week of December. Right here, right where she started this climb. This is the 11th. This is that piece of news we read. She has been climbing all of this time. And you can see she got right up underneath that support. It's like it almost stopped her, right? She just floated there and then broke free. Now, this is not the news today. This is yesterday. I don't know why she bounced like that yesterday. Maybe to just get through this strong resistance. She needed a push. She got all the way up here from uh, 0.011 to 0.014 almost. 
came back down, landed hard on that nine day SMA and has continued her incline floating above the nine. And look at this, my perfect pattern. I love this. My PPO, always put it on the top. My ADX, I put it right up underneath. What is an ADX? Trend continuation. It tells me if this trend is going to change. It's been climbing, climbing, climbing. Well, as long as this is going in one direction, it don't matter if it's going up or down, as long as it's going in the same direction, it means your trend is continuing. As soon as the line changes, it means your trend has changed. It's either going sideways or it's falling. So we got a nice bobby pin here. That is a nice wide spread. That tells me 100% that the price is climbing. Our MACD is strong. Since the 11th, she has been climbing, crossing that signal line, and continuing her incline. And our RSI, once it got up into the high 50s, it has stayed there, has gone into the 60s, and even touched the 70s, and it's just sitting up there in the hot zone. So everything looks really good on the one-hour chart. Coming down to our five-day, five-minute. Well, she has been moving up all of this time. Everything looks great. Our 20-day SMA has just come into the picture. Our new SMAs come in when we have enough shares being traded to accumulate enough data to support it. So we finally get our 20. We've still got to get a 50 and a 200. We've got to sell a lot more shares than what was it, 37,000 we did today. Uh, our PPO is still climbing. It's very gentle now, <laughs> though I can't say the same thing for our ADX. That's pretty drastic, and that just came into the picture. MACD is still pushing up, has slowed down, but it isn't falling, and our RSI is still hot up here in the mid-60s right now on our five-minute chart. So there's a lot of potential for gain here, folks, if something occurs. Now, we're looking at stocks that are warm on the charts. That's my priority right now. And then I'm looking for the news to support it. Is there enough news to give it a push? Another nitrous boost left in the tank. So this looks like it has potential. Two pieces of news have kept it running. She's growing. She's not surging. She's growing, which is steady. You can count on that more. You don't have to worry about it going up and coming back down. Growth will just dip and grow, you know, slowly and steady. So SVSN is showing all the signs of potential growth. She could have a pop. She could have a surge like she did back then. Could get yourself a couple hundred percent gains. Of course, some more due diligence wouldn't hurt. The next stock that caught my curiosity going through the charts was ticker NRSAF. This is North Atlantic. This is a Norwegian airline company that's only been in business less than a year. She is flying from the United States to the United Kingdom to Europe and back. Now, they haven't had any new news or filings for a while. Matter of fact, the only piece of information I've got that I'm going to share with you, which I'm basing all of this on, is their first financial. It came out 2022. It was for the first half of the year. Now, actually, it was only from April till June. That's as far as it went. But if it's any indication of what the second financial is going to be, and that is due right about now, the second half for 2022, this should be an impressive financial. There should be some strong revenues on them. As I said, this company's only been in business less than a year. So NRSAF finished today just a wee bit over 26 cents and almost 15.5% gains today. On the top tier, of the OTC. We don't get to see a lot of these. She's on the QX, also called the best. You have the pink tier, the better tier, that's the QB, and the best tier, which is the QX. Why is it the best? Because it is the most transparent. You get the most information you can possibly get about a company on the QX. They give enough information here that they could qualify to be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. So, they've also got a verified profile and independent directors. Now, independent directors is curious because you only really need them if you're going to uplist. Now, they may have already used them to come from the pink up to the QX. I don't know. But they would need them if they had plans of going to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. And they are sitting there. So, who knows? We also got a bonus here. They're penny stock exempt. What this means is they're not a startup company. Not really. It means they've been in business for three to five years. I mean, the company's just started making money since April. I don't know how long they've actually been in business. And penny stock exempt literally says that you have to have been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars in assets and no problems with your filings. In other words, you gotta show yourself reliable and trustworthy, and they've done that. So this company is on the right tier with all the right green ticks. 
looks real good. Now, as I already told you, the company is an airline company out of Norway. So what was the relative volume around this company today? <laughs> well, the good news is it's about twice as much as normal. She went from 2.3 thousand shares to 4.8 thousand shares. Definitely under the radar. And I get the feeling we're going to be finding a lot of those sort of stocks under the radar. We're not trying to find stocks that have already run. We're looking for stocks that haven't. And that is usually under the radar. All right, share structure. Ah, I didn't go look this one up and I may not be able to find it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go look this up during my editing and I will throw whatever I find up there. And if I don't find anything, I'll put three question marks so you know I didn't forget. It, it happens. <laughs> Financials for this company. Well, this is why I went and looked at their financial. They show absolutely nothing here. Now, I kind of expected that, hearing that they've only been in business actually making money since April. So I thought, well, maybe their uh, most recent financial does have some numbers in it. And it did. Let's jump into that. This is their 2022 half year report. As I said, this goes from April to June. That's it. That's as much as they could cover. Looking at some of the bullets here, their operating revenues were $3 million recognized by June. So in those couple of months, they had already done $3 million worth of business. 11 of 15 aircrafts were delivered to Norris as of June 30th, 2022, and two more have been delivered since that period. Total liquidity at the period end, they had about $105 million. So they were doing okay. Norse launched its ticket sales on the 29th of April, 2022, and the first flight took off on June 14th. So as I said, they haven't been in business very long. Now, they got a lot of information in here if you want to see how many flights they do to where, how often they're on time, how often they're late. All that information is here. But I'm going to bypass all that and just show you this. During July 2022, Norris took delivery of two more aircrafts and immediately subleased them out. Norris currently has taken delivery of 13 aircrafts, of which four are subleased out. As part of Norris' application for aircraft operator certificate in the UK, it has capitalized its wholly owned UK subsidiary, Norris Atlantic UK, with $41 million. So they've got a new subsidiary that is taking off right now as well. And that's what I see. They made $3 million in a very short window, very small. And now we've had, oh, you know, six months since then, another half a year. So I'm expecting that to be a lot bigger than this. And now that we're traveling since COVID restrictions have come down, God only knows how much business they've been doing. But that is what I'm expecting. I don't know of any deals they're making, any joint ventures, anything like that. I'm basing all of this on their financial, which should be coming out soon. Matter of fact, when did this one come out? You can normally tell just by looking at the dates when one comes out. This came out on the 9th uh, for the 6th. So we could expect three months after the 12th which would be January, February, March. Sometime in March, this would be coming out. That's my rough guess. So that's when I would expect this thing to run, which would be now is the time to consider it at these prices. Let's go take a look at this chart. First glance, it's not a very impressive chart, is it? This is ticker NRSAF, North Atlantic, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here in May of $1.76. And we had a low bubble, mm, very beginning of January of 20 cents. And right now we are at 26 cents. She has been falling all of this time and she is underneath everything and just starting to break out right now. Now we can see a strong support right here where all the prices stopped and bounced. So we're gonna draw a line right there and she's just approaching that right now. We got another support right here. This is where she would climb to if she gets over this first one. She'd go from uh, 26 up to about 42. Now we've got a real strong one up here, but of course there was a surge here, right? There's a big drop, a gap as people like to talk about them. So find the middle, find the middle. That's gonna be another strong support right there. So we have gone from our price of 26 cents up to 28 cents to get over our first resistance jumping up to 42 and then we got a big gap here all the way up to 80 cents and then she's going to jump clear up here to a dollar 15. now there could be a little roll in these areas but those will be the steps as she's climbing 
Our technicals right now, it looks like they're just about ready to change. Can you see that? This was getting closer and closer, right? Everything's falling, so the blue line and the red line are coming together. But right here, they're starting to separate. This is very gentle, but you can see she's gotten closer to the pink line and is about ready to cross over, and that is definitely falling away. And she is pushing up right now. She's gotten from underneath her nine. You can't climb unless you're on top of the nine. I know it sounds silly, but that is that's a, a truth. Once she got on top of the nine, she got on top of the 20 and got some balls. She got balls. Look at how big these bars have gotten now. She's sitting on the 20 looking like she's ready to jump up on top of that 50. Look at our long climb on our MACD here. She has been working to this point for a very long time. She's just now approaching the signal line. And our, MACD, our RSI has been climbing from the basement for the whole month. The whole month she's come from the basement and she's now up to 50. So she's warming up very slowly, but you can see she is warming up. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. So we hit that low bubble here on the fourth, slowly, ever so slowly, she is working her way up and now she's getting a stronger churn around. She's getting on top of her 50. She's above that, right? And she is right at that support line that we need to get on top of so that she can push up to that 42 cents right there. Our technicals, uh, well, our MACD is growing. We've got a crossover. I know it's tough to see. We have a crossover going on in our PPO in the right direction. It's going the right way. Our MACD has been growing for quite a while, as has our RSI. So everything looks still very warm on the one hour charts. Five day, five minute. Not a lot to look at, but it's all going up, isn't it? We were here at 22 cents. When was this? That was the 17th, uh, 19th, 23rd. So I see a few days missing here. She's not trading every single day, but I do see the volume is growing, our price is growing, and even on this chart, everything is still pushing up. Folks, what we're waiting for is that financial. I'm sure that this company's been doing business ever since June, and they've done a lot more business from June till December than they did from April to June. So I'm expecting this to be an impressive financial, which could get a nice bounce out of this. So NRSAF could be up to a month we're waiting, but put it on your list. It won't hurt, will it? And it may make you some money. This next stock we're taking a look at, we're not gonna spend too much time on because I'm really not telling you to invest in this company or even play it. I think she's had her day and it's gonna be a while. This is We Commerce Holdings, ticker W-E-C-M-F. They had some big news come out today. They made a merger deal with a company called Tiny Holdings. And both companies do the same thing, so it's a perfect fit. They help Shopify business owners. Shopify is where you sell lots of goods, and they've got lots of apps and tools to help Shopify business owners do better business. But it really isn't about what the merger is or what they do. It's not about their share structure. It's not about how much money they're making. That had nothing to do with why they ran the day. And the fact of the matter was, I knew exactly where it was gonna to run today. I said it earlier on today, this is gonna to go to $5.12. I was 99% sure that was where it was gonna hit. And guess what? Yeah, right on the money. Now you're saying, John, come on, how did you know that? It's one thing to say a stock is gonna go up, that's good. But they actually call on the penny where it's gonna hit before it falls back. How did you do that? Well, I'd like to say it was all my wizardry, but it isn't. There's no secret sauce involved. They told us. Yes, they actually told us. This is the news that came out today. WeCommerce signs definitive agreement to combine with Tiny. And they give us lots of information in this news, but they gave us the important piece of information three times. The transaction represents substantial value for WeCommerce shareholders with an attributed value of $5.12 per share. The $5.12 per share attributed value represents a pro forma combined enterprise value for the two companies now worth $962 million. The $5.12 value attributed to the shares of WeCommerce represents a 161% premium to Friday's closing. Well, to 
this morning it was up higher than that i think it was 228 percent premium so looking back you can see she was up almost 200 percent gains today finished today at four dollars and fifty cents but she did hit five dollars and twelve cents on the money because we were told what it was worth and when you see a bigger company that's done their due diligence stepping in saying we're going to buy this many shares at this set price well, that's the new set price. And I see it all the time. When they do that, you can watch the price jump from wherever it is all the way up. And I think this one started at $1.15 or $1.21 today, and it went up to $5.12 before it fell back. So there was about 300% gains, and it could have been caught just by reading the news carefully. Right, you didn't really think I was going to let you go without sharing a SPAC warrant with you, did you? Ah, uh, 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 you know me better than that. This is Flame Acquisition Corp, a SPAC. Their warrant ticker is FLME forward slash WS. Now, they don't have any new news. They don't have any new filings. What I found was lingering news. This news actually came out all the way back in November, November 11th, about two and a half months ago. Flame Acquisition was entering into a merger agreement with Sable Offshore, a Nova Scotia-based natural gas exploration consortium. The deal is worth $883 million, and they got lots of money backing them up. Flame holds approximately $289 million in a cash trust. The deal was further supported by an additional $71.5 million in pipe. They've got another $400 million and $623 million if they need it. There's all sorts of money backing this company up. So we got lots of great information here, but the most crucial piece of information is not here. What is that? The closing date. When are you going to close this deal? So I clicked this button, read more right there, and I found what I was looking for over here in this. This is a Schedule 14A that came out not too long ago, and all I'm looking for is a date. Now, I would love to use the search bar and throw in a date, but what date do I put in? How do you search for a date? So I literally had to do a manual search, just like this. And this is about as fast as I was doing it. I'm looking for a date. A date stands out differently. Numbers stand out differently than words. So I was just floating through here like this, looking for a date. And I was pretty much going about this fast. Speed reading came in handy after all. But I got all the way down here, and right there was the date. The completion window ends March 1st, 2023. So we're coming up on the end of January. We've got just a little over a month before this deal should close. Don't you think now would be a good time to look at it since nobody else is paying attention to it? Let's go see what that chart looks like. We are looking at the warrant for the SPAC flame acquisition. Ticker for the warrant is FLME forward slash WS. Now we are looking at a six month, four hour chart. You can see she's already had some activity. She's already had some growth, but I think there's gonna be more when they close this merger. So we had a low bubble back here in May of six and a half cents. And at the end of November, we were at 84 cents. Now this run started at the beginning of November. November 1st, she was at 11 cents. The whole month she climbed hitting 84. That's 750% gains they got if they hung it out for the whole month. Then she fell down to this support line securely. You can see that. Now, would it surprise you to know that this support line I drew back in January of 2022, and I just didn't turn it off. And it's been drawing itself all the way across my charts for all this time. And look, it has a place on the charts after all. She's come down, hit that perfectly, bounced off it once, bounced off it twice, bounced off it a third time, and there you go. She is off and running, sitting on top of her nine right now with some big bars. Our technicals, well, we've got a crossover right there on our PPO pushing up. Same thing with the MACD, crossover a little earlier, pushing up, and our RSI is up at 66. Our four-hour chart does look primed. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So not a lot going on here until the 50-day SMA got close. You can see she jumped. The bars got big. She meant to get on top of this 50. Had some bumps up here. Went high, went low. Said, bye-bye, I got to go. And she took off. And once she hit that 200, that was it. She has launched herself. And the technicals say she's not done climbing. 
Everything is pushing up right now and our RSI is even getting stronger. Five day, five minute. Just up, 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 up. And everything is perfect. We have our price sitting on top of the nine, a little bit of spread between the nine and the 20, a little bit of spread between the 20 and the 50. You gotta remember, there's rubber bands attaching all of this. So if anything gets too far away from anything else, especially when climbing, you gotta expect it to come back down. But right now, it looks perfect. Our technicals show that we are still pushing up. There's no detriment here. I do see we had a crossover here. Our MACD did come under, but it looks like it's trying to come back up as our RSI is pushing up right now. Now, I want to back this up all the way to, let's go back three years. There's your high, folks. We have a high of $1.58, and she was lower than our price is right now before this run started. So don't think we can't hit that $1.58 from $72. I'm not saying we're going to, but there is no bigger piece of news than the closing of a merger deal on a SPAC. That is the finish line. That's what everybody's been looking for. And that's when the SPAC starts making money. They've got a business in there that's generating revenues. It's the best news you're going to get. So we expect this to run. Now, they didn't say March 1st was the closing. They said up till. That is the deadline. They need to get it done before that point. So it could be done earlier. Now, if they run out of time, they'll have to do a vote to get an extension to complete the deal, which just the vote in itself will cause this to bounce because as that deadline gets closer, people get worried. They don't want to get all their money back for a failed SPAC without any gains. Who wants all their money back after being tied up for a year and a half and you get nothing for it, right? So when you see a vote, if you need a vote and it's approved, man, that warrant jumps. But if they can get this done before March 1st, we could see a serious run on this. I don't know if it'll get this high, but this gives you an idea of what possibly could happen. The warrant, FLME forward slash WS in the next five weeks. You need to keep your eye on it. Well, that was a little different for me probably a little different for you. We're used to seeing stocks that have had huge gains, tons of volume. Not today. Today we are monitoring stocks based on the heat in the chart. And then we go try to support it with a catalyst from news or filings. Not just recent, but even old. And you also saw how reading these news presses is real important. Sometimes they will actually tell you the new value of the stock. And you can almost guarantee that the price is going to go right up to that price and then fall back. Like we saw today with $5.12. I love sharing this stuff with you. I hope you're putting it to good use. Remember folks, due diligence, it reveals so much. It is a treasure hunt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.